Hey, good morning, ladies. Hey, it's Wednesday morning at 9.30 and we're doing, we're doing this. I'm so glad that you're here. Again, I've just been looking so forward to being with you uh, Wednesday morning. Um, Sarah Ingram is also with us. She is on the other side. Hey, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Um, just gonna wait just a couple of seconds here for a couple ladies just to, to join us. Um, where are you joining us from this morning? What part of Denver are you in? What part of um, the country are you in? Uh, I would love to know where you guys are, are chiming in from. Um, what's going on in your house? Like right at this very moment, um, my kids are homeschooling. All four, all four, we have four kiddos and, and they're homeschooling. They are not homeschool kids, but they are online doing that. So if you're a teacher, if you know a teacher, just I, I'm just so thankful for you. You are making it happen for all the kids today. You are just making this happen. If you're a homeschool teacher, you've been making it happen this whole time. And so hats off to all those teachers doing that this morning. What are you guys up to this morning? What is your day? Uh, what does your day look like? Um, so for for our house already this morning, um, something kind of fun happened. Joel um, actually started this morning uh, as he had a Zoom call for men to call in and have have a, a men's Bible study this morning. They just um, are gonna kick off going through uh, the book of Romans, which is no small thing. And so he started that this morning. He was up on his Zoom call at 6.30 this morning doing that. If you've got some men that might be interested in doing that, I man, I would encourage you. He had 16 or 17, 16 or 17 guys um, on the call. And here's what's really cool about that. Um, one of our missionaries, Nate Crandall, all the way over in Chiang Rai, Thailand. He joined in on the call this morning. How cool is that? Um, that is one of the unexpected gifts of this season, isn't it? Uh, we are doing things that we didn't think that we would be doing at this time, uh, which has sent us for a loop in several ways. Um, but also there are some really sweet um, things that have kind of happened as a result of this time. Uh, obviously, Nate could never come to uh, a Wednesday morning uh, men's group. That wouldn't be something that Nate could do because obviously he's in Thailand. But, but because of that, we can do that. We can join in from wherever we're at and be a part of this. And so that's what we're doing. Um, this is not a normal Bible study. This is not a normal uh, Wednesday morning for any of us. What we were doing a month ago is not what we're doing today. But something that kind of struck me before we kind of get into uh, our lesson, I just want to just talk for one second about something that I revisited here in the past couple of days, and that is Psalm 23. And in Psalm 23, we, we probably know it. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But then that next verse in there, it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he restores my soul. Like it or not, we have been made to lie down. We have had a global sit down, haven't we? And the Lord, uh, the Lord has said to us, I I'm going to have you sit down for a moment. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he restores my soul. And what I've been reminded of as I have visited that passage and as I've rethought it in my head, as I've been thinking about it, as I've gone on walks, um, and just around the house that he makes me lie down in green pastures. I have a choice when I'm sitting in that green pasture. I can look around and notice the green grass that's around me, or I can just sit in that green pasture and go, when can I get out of this season and start running again? When can I get out of this and just get on with my life? When I think what the Lord would have me do right now is say, I, I've, I'm, I'm in this green pasture right now. Am I going to stop and sit in it for a minute? and notice and take notice of what, what God might be saying to me, what he might be saying of himself, what he might be saying to others around us. Will I take a minute as I am made to lie down in that green pasture? Would I allow him to restore my soul in some of that? And I wonder what that means for you this morning. As you are sitting in your home, you have been made to lie down in green pastures. Hopefully you've got some good coffee as you're sitting in that, because that always helps. Um, but, but what are you looking around? What are you noticing God doing? What are you noticing God doing in, in this season? So um, as we've kind of settled into this new normal, 
we are, we are doing Wednesday mornings here and we're taking this space, we're taking this season to kind of look through the book of Ephesians. And last week we kicked off on this idea of grace and how amazing it is and just a reawakening of that. And I challenged you to look through the first two chapters of Ephesians and write down everything that God offers, this amazing gift of grace that he pours out for the whole wide world. It is, it is not uh, for some, it is for all and what that grace is and how awesome and amazing that grace is. And so I hope if you haven't had time to just open up to the book of Ephesians and look through those first few chapters and go, man, God has given me every spiritual blessing, grace upon grace upon grace upon grace that he offers to us and what he offers. Uh, and, and just, and just re-remembering that, re-remembering God's amazing gift of grace. And so when we do that, if, if we were sitting in a room together, if we were all sitting in one room together, I would, I would probably start our morning off um, with just some quiet, just some time to breathe. And, and I would probably uh, pull up this song that came out, it, it's been several years ago by Matt Redman. Um, it, it's, it's called Your Grace Finds Me. And if you, if you want to take some time this week and, and re-pull that up, maybe on, on Apple uh, iTunes or wherever you find your music, um, Matt Redman, your grace finds me. And I would probably have us just sit in that for just a minute, just to rest and, and just kind of go over the lyrics and, and, and the lyrics, I'll just read them to you just very, very briefly. It's there in the newborn cry. It's in the light of every sunrise in the shadows of this light, your great grace. It's there on the mountaintop there in the everyday and the mundane there in the sorrow and the dancing your great grace. Oh, such grace. And as we, uh, we're in the, we're in the week of, um, it's Palm Sunday this weekend, you guys. Um, Easter's kind of been lost. <laughs> Easter's kind of, of getting lost, but I want to remind us that we're in the week of Palm Sunday and, and to just re-remember the grace that God offers and, and just have a reawakening of that in our lives. And so, and so I want to turn the corner this morning out of that because, um, because we could sit in that for a while and go, God's great big grace. And it's on, a, it's on this 30,000 foot level and it's for all, uh, in all, above all. Um, but what I want to do today is I want to take a, a few minutes with your coffee, with your Bible, and to just breathe and go, but it's also for me. It's also for you right now where you're at right now wherever your new normal or your strange normal or your painful normal um wherever that normal is for you you're you're in the right spot for god's grace and his grace is for you specifically this morning and so um today last week we talked about a grace awakening today we're talking about grace received grace received grace received for ourselves and so grab your bibles open up to ephesians if you haven't already and turn with me to Ephesians chapter two. This is so weird. And it's so crazy. We're at, like having a Bible study on, online, you guys. This is so crazy. Um, and as you're reading, as you're going through things, chime on there. Sarah Ingram, like, like I said, is, is on there. Um, if you've got thoughts about what we're reading or about what we're talking about, chime in there. If you've got questions, um, man, I want to make this as interactive as possible, even though, even though we're not in the same room together. So Ephesians chapter two. Again, we're talking about grace received for us. I'm going to start in verse 1, and I'm reading out of the NIV, the New International Version. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rulers of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following it and its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. Verse four, but because of his great love for us, we were all that, but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace 
expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And then verse 8, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Grace upon grace upon grace that he offers to us. Those verses in there just contradict the both sides of the equation. Very holy, very holy God. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, everything. Our creator, the creator of our souls, God himself. Holy God, us. <laughs> holy God, us. But because of his great love for us, made a way so that we could now be with him. And that is the reason that we celebrate Easter is because Jesus came to earth and, and, and crossed that bridge. Jesus came to satisfy the standard of God that no one can satisfy. The standard of God is holiness. And Jesus came to satisfy the standard of God that no one can satisfy. He is absolute perfection. Jesus credits our account because we were lost without hope. We had no hope. We had no hope whatsoever to even be a part or be close to God. Um, as we as we celebrate Easter coming up soon, when Jesus died, it tore the veil in the temple and made a way for us to then be with God. That is That is the whole purpose of Jesus coming is that he made a way so that we could be with God. And again, in, in verse 9 there, it says, not by works so that nobody can boast. Not because of anything I've done. Not because of some amazing thing. Not because I'm holding a Bible study on a Wednesday morning. Not because I'm, I'm doing a great job with my kids. Not because I am figuring out this pandemic thing and doing it well. No. No, it is because of the grace of God alone. It is because of the grace and the love that he has for us. And that is truth. That is, that is, that's truth. And, and so I'm going to bookend truth on both sides of this because where we find ourselves so oftentimes is right in the middle isn't it we know that truth and we can understand it intellectually that god made a way through jesus and because of grace because of grace we we get that cognitively but where we find ourselves is oftentimes in the middle of going but i'm gonna have to earn every drop of my goodness back i get it on a salvation level I can get it on a salvation level going, okay, so because of, of his gift for me, I, I can spend eternity with God. The alternative of that is very well laid out by, by Jesus himself, that the alternative of that is a life of separation from him. And so I can get that. I can get that on a salvation level. And I think we do. I think we can get that on a 30,000 30, foot level. But where I want us to dig in this week is remembering that his grace is for me in the everyday and the mundane. Because so oftentimes, how many times do you say this? Maybe you, maybe you guys catch yourself doing this. Man, I'm a, I'm a bad, I'm a bad fill in the blank. Um, man, I'm a bad mom. I said the wrong things. Boy, I shouldn't have done it that way. Boy, I wish I was better at this. Boy, I wish I could step up to the plate and do this better. Man, I, I'm so behind. Man, I, I'm not doing well in this. I feel so afraid and I feel bad for feeling afraid and I, and I am just, I'm anxious and I'm this and you, and you begin to pile on this stuff and, and you feel like a failure. Um, when, one day I was sitting with a good friend of mine and, and, and she's also a mentor of mine, um, sweet Brenda Caker. Boy, if you guys know Brenda Caker, um, you know that she is, she's the real deal. And so I was sitting with her one day and I was just telling her all this stuff, um, like, like you and I do. We just, we, we just, we go, man, I, I cannot get my act together. I cannot figure this thing out. And I was just going on and on about that, about how bad I felt about, about everything. And she just looked at me and she said, girl, you need to give yourself a break. And that is, and that is what grace is. And I have a choice in that. I have a choice if I'm going to lean into that gift that has been offered to me. When somebody gives you a gift, if I was to show up at your house and I gave you a gift, what's the, what's the right thing to do? What's the polite thing to do, obviously, is to receive that grace and go, I'm, I'm going to take that grace. I'm going to use every drop of it. 
if I gave you a gift card to Starbucks or to Amazon or uh, to your favorite restaurant, you wouldn't go in and just use part of the gift. You wouldn't go in and just use half of what I gave you. No, you, you'd use that whole thing and you'd get a Vinti. You would go into Amazon and you go, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this whole gift card and, and use all of it. But we just sometimes go, well, I'm just gonna accept grace for my salvation, but I'm not gonna accept grace on the day to day. And I don't believe that that is, that is how God wants us to do that. If you look up um, the definition of grace, the definition of grace is that favor of being inclined, of being favorable towards, it means leaning in to share a benefit. And I love that. It says, and, and, and in this, it says, because God is always leaning in towards us. God is never repelled by our sin. God is never repelled by our past. God is never, um, he's never offended by what you have done. He's never offended by what I've done. That's not who he is. He's, he's always leaning in towards us. By grace, we have been saved through faith, not as a result of our works so that none of us can boast. It is God leaning towards us. I want to just point out something uh, in the book of Ephesians. Um, and I know for some of us, uh, if we were in Bible study, it would make more sense for us to go chapter by chapter by chapter. Um, but that's not what we're doing here. We're just, we're kind of, I'm, I'm, we're kind of looking at Ephesians as a whole. Um, so for those of you who are, who, who love structure, um, we're going to bounce. <laughs> we're going to bounce just a little bit, uh, because just because we are, uh, that's what this study is going to be about. We're just going to bounce around throughout Ephesians and, and just look at a couple things about grace. Um, but in just, in just talking about this, this gift of grace that God offers to us and are receiving it, not as a result of anything we've done. I want you to look over um, in Ephesians chapter 3 and then jump down to verse 8. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. And Paul is the one writing this. And Paul there, he says, Although I am less than the least of all of God's people, I am less than all the least of God's people, this grace was given to me. I think of all the people in the world who, who were able to experience the grace of God. I'm not sure that any of us would, would outpace Paul in someone who might consider themselves the least of these. Um, if you look throughout scripture, and we do not have time, if we, if we had an hour and a half to sit in Bible study, we would, we would look at all of these. If you've got a pen and paper and want to look these up for yourself at a different time, you can look at Acts 8. Um, that tells the story of the first martyr uh, that Stephen was killed uh, for his faith. And, and it says there in verse 1 of, of Acts 8, it says, Paul approved. Uh, he was named Saul at the time. God changed his name to Paul. But in that verse, first verse there, it says, and Saul approved of their killing him. And on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. And godly men buried Stephen and mourn deeply for him, but Saul began to destroy the church. It says that Saul began to destroy the church. Saul's history was full. Paul's, Paul's um, uh, history was full of him destroying the church. And so when, he's, when his life is switched over and he is now a new person in Jesus Christ, he's been given a new name and he now stands as Paul, he understands that I haven't done anything to earn it, to deserve God's grace. I, I was I was killing Christians. I, I was approving of their death. I was I was dragging them out of their homes. Um, Acts nine gives an account of of what he was doing before his conversion. First uh, Corinthians fifteen nine, um, Paul's like I persecuted the church of God. Nobody worse than Paul, um, who deserved who who deserved a drop of God's grace. Um, Paul just, Paul just makes a statement of going there in Ephesians 3, 8, going, I, I'm the least of these, and yet this grace was given to me. Um, what are those things? What are those things in your life that you feel like, I, I think God might be ashamed of me. I think, I think if God were to lean into me and offer me a gift of grace, I, I might be embarrassed by this. 
I might, I might not be able to be open to, to receiving God's grace in my life. What are those things that you feel like separate you? Maybe not salvation. Maybe you've gone, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior 100%. And I get that on a salvation level. But on a day-to-day basis, on, a, on the daily, what are the things that you maybe go, I don't know that I'm experiencing God's grace in this in my life. Maybe it's, maybe it's past mistakes. Maybe it's where you feel guilt about something. Maybe it's where you feel shame about something. I would say to you that his grace finds you and can cover that. And that is such good news for us this morning. Um, I'm going to encourage you just to spend, spend some time there this week. Maybe there's something that you go... Yeah, I know what that is. Oh, I know exactly what that is. I know exactly what keeps me from God's grace. Um, spend some time in that this week and call that thing out. What is that thing? Maybe the enemy is just accusing you still of something that happened. Call that out and go, but you know what? I bet God's grace covers it. I bet God's grace is big enough for it. I bet I haven't found the one sin that can keep me separated from his love and his grace. I bet I haven't. Call that out and live in victory. Call that out and live in faith and live in freedom this week. And know that God's grace finds you. That that his grace is sufficient. Uh, which is where we're going to go next and we're going to bookend this thing. Started in grace with the first part of Ephesians chapter 2 that says that we have been saved from all of it as a gift of God. It is grace. It is grace. And we find ourselves in the middle all the time, don't we? Going, oh, but 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 I am this, I am so this, I'm so human. We find ourselves in the middle and we're going to bookend it with another truth. And I want, I want us to sit here. Um, I want you to sit in this for the, for the remainder of your week. And that is this verse. It's second Corinthians, second Corinthians 12, nine. And again, it's written by Paul, second Corinthians 12, nine. And if you want to turn to it, that would be awesome. I'm going to turn to it here. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians 12, nine. And maybe it's a verse you've heard before. Maybe this is a new one for you, but it's one of my favorites. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And it says this. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in in weakness. I'm just going to point out just a couple things in that verse before we before we uh, get to the end of how I want you to kind of apply this verse this week. So my grace is sufficient for you. That word sufficient right there, it means unfailing strength. It means to be strong. It means it's enough. It means to defend and ward off. It means to be satisfied and to be contented. My grace is sufficient for you. It is enough. It is unfailing strength. It is strong. It is enough. It will ward off. It will satisfy you and it will cause you to be content. His grace is sufficient for us. My grace is sufficient for you. And this is God speaking to Paul. And then that second half of that, of that verse right there, it says, for my power is perfected in weakness couple things that I want us to look in that part right there for my power. That word power right there, it's the same word that was used in the first chapter of Ephesians that we talked about last week. It's the word where we get our word dynamite. That word power right there is where we get our word dynamite. Um, It's the word used uh, when God raised Jesus from the dead, the power of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That's the power right there. That's the power that this verse is talking about. My power is perfected in our weakness. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is perfected in our weakness. And one last thing I want to point out in that verse is that word perfected right there. This this is so cool. That word perfected right there is the same phrase, the same word that Jesus used on the cross. When Jesus hung on the cross and, and, and he was at the very end and he said, it is finished. That word that he spoke on the cross as he died for our sins, as he, 
as he hung there and he spoke out the words, it is finished, is the same word right there that Paul uses that his power is perfected in our weakness. As Jesus hung on the cross and said, it is finished. I have done the work. I have completed what I was put on this earth to do by taking on the sins of the world. It is finished. Is that phrase right there? My power, God says, my power is perfected in your weakness. My power is actually completed and made known to its fullest right in the middle of where you feel most weak and most unable to do your life. That is where his power is the best, is where we're weak. It's not when we are out crushing it and moving it and hustling and making it happen all in our own strength. No, it's where we go, I 100% need you, God. That is where his power is actually completed and made perfect is in our very weakness. And so what is the, what's the area of weakness for you? Paul goes on to say, therefore, I'm going to most, most gladly boast about it because that's where, that's where God's going to be made known the most. So right now, where, wherever that is, where, where you are feeling weak in the middle of this whole pandemic, quarantine, coronation that you find yourself in, um, where are you feeling weak? Where are you feeling like, man, I, I don't know that I can do this. I, I don't know. I don't know how I can do it physically. I don't know how we can do it emotionally. Um, and the emotional part is very real for some people because you are in homes and, and it is tough. The people that you're living with are tough. Or you're living in a house and you're single and it is tough because it is hard to be by yourself. Um, I don't know if we can make it financially. I don't know if I can do this. That is actually where God wants to come in and be his best. And so, and so what I want, uh, the things that I'm going to ask you to do this week, I'm going to have you kind of reread, go ahead and just spend some time in Ephesians chapters two and chapter three, kind of look at that. Um, I've got my high tech, high tech papers again this week. Um, I want you to I want you to read that, but I want you to write out. I want you to write out 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Write it out. Write out the write out the whole thing, but especially um, especially especially that first part. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in your weakness. Write that out. Find a note card, find a journal, find it. Write it. Write it out. There's something about writing some, something out with your pen and a paper. It's not high tech. It's not our iPhones. But there's something there's something to it. Write out 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And then here's what I want you to do. Again, I want you to walk. Um, Ephesians is broken up into two very separate, separate things. The first half, chapters 1 through 3, is all about grace and, and what it is for us. And then the second half, Paul starts chapter 4 by saying... Therefore, uh, walk in a manner worthy of your calling. And so um, we're going to walk. We're going to spend some time walking because we can do that. We can walk. We can walk it out. What a great time to walk. And here's what I want you to do when you're walking this week. I want you to speak out that part in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And I want you to emphasize each word, a different word, as you go. So I want you to walk it out. I want you to speak it out. Speak out 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And I want you to emphasize each word as you go. I've done this before. And I've done it with this verse specifically. And so here's how this would look. So I'm out walking and it's beautiful. And you've got your hat on, maybe it's a little cold, whatever. But you're walking and you just start talking to Jesus. And you just go, God, I'm, I'm so glad I get to be out here and I get to breathe in some fresh air. And I'm just going to read this verse back to you, God, because I know that you spoke it once to Paul, but I believe that you're speaking it to me as well. And so, God, I'm just going to start here in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you. And I'm going to pretend, God, that you are speaking this to me. And here's what you say. You say, my grace is sufficient for you. Your grace, God. Not, not, my, not, my, uh, not my kids, 
not my people around me, not my husband. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace, your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace, not my money, not all the foundations that I've built up, not all the normalcy of my life, your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. Not maybe, not if I'm good enough, not when you feel like it, not if I uh, stop wearing yoga pants for the seventh day in a row. No, your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. It's enough. It's, it, it causes me to be content. It fills me up. It's everything that I need. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. You offer it to me. I'm going to receive it. You give it for me. I'm going to receive it. Your grace is sufficient for me. And then grace, your grace is sufficient for me. It might be for the whole wide world and every single person on the planet, but today it is for me. It is for me and I can rest in that and I can know that to my soul. Your grace is sufficient for me. And then take that second verse, second part of that verse, for my power is for your power is perfected in my weakness and go through each of those words just like I just just like I just did and speak it back to him. For, for your power is perfected in my weakness and go through that and speak it back to him, putting an emphasis on the next word each time you say it because it brings something different, doesn't it? Every time you emphasize a different word, it means something different to you. And it just reiterates what is truth and it pours truth back into us because again, we are receiving so much information all the time and we've got to be able to push back on that and go, but my God and his grace is sufficient for me for, for his power is actually perfected in my weakness. And that is good news for us today. I want you to just, just sit in that for just a minute and remember that this week. Find yourself some time and breathe. Breathe in his grace. Breathe out his praise and spend some time with him. I'm going to close us um, this morning. I'm just going to read. I'm going to read Psalm 23 this morning as we close out. Um, it's one It's one maybe that you grew up, maybe your grandma would say it. Maybe it was on a wall somewhere. Um, I, I, I seem to remember um, Psalm 22 written on some plaque somewhere in either my grandma's house or my mom had it at one point. Um, but I'm just going to read this over you wherever you're at, uh, whatever time of day, maybe you've circled back, maybe it's middle of the night, maybe your kids have gone to bed finally and you're like, woo uh, got some time to yourself, whatever, wherever you find yourself this morning. I'm just going to read Psalm 23 over us. Um, and just receive this. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a gift. Hmm. Man, I so, I so love you. I am for you. You are not alone. Don't you ever think that you are alone for one second? We are in this together. Um, I am praying for you. If you've got a prayer request that you just want us to be made aware of, that you want us to collectively be praying for you about, um, throw that up in the comments. If there's something that you want 
uh, me specifically to be praying about, um, man, message me, message me on Facebook, find me, um, email us, go to harborchurch.life. Um, there's an act, there's a prayer page on there at harborchurch.life. You can, you can go up there. There's, and, and we've got a whole team of people who are praying for others, um, throughout this time. Um, we are in this, we are in this together. His grace finds you right now, wherever you are at. Stay in that. Allow yourself to, to be in that, in that space and look around and go, God is with me. God is for me and he loves me right where I'm at today. You are so loved. Man, have a good Wednesday and we will see you back here next week. Same time, same place. Love you girls. Bye.